This video will discuss how to represent the coordinates of a molecule as a Z matrix. So in our previous videos on XYZ files, we noted that if we have n atoms, then each of those atoms has an X, Y, and Z coordinate. So we have 3n coordinates. But we also noted that only 3n minus 6 of those, 3n minus 6 for uh, nonlinear polyatomics and 3n minus 5 for linear, but more often than not, 3n minus 6 unique coordinates, because six of those are what we would call redundant coordinates. So three of those were translations, where we're net moving the entire molecule through space in X, Y, or Z. And three of those are rotations, where we're just rotating around some axis, but we're not changing anything about the internal structure of the molecule. So another alternative type of file or type of uh, representation for molecular coordinates would be what's called a Z matrix. And in a Z matrix, you do have 3n minus 6 coordinates. So all of your coordinates are going to be unique. So what you have in a Z matrix is you have n minus 1 bond lengths, if you have n atoms, n minus 2 bond angles, and n minus 3 torsion angles, as we've been uh, discussing for the past uh, few videos, what those uh, quantities are. Okay, so if I wanted to represent a molecule in a Z matrix, uh, just having this line here for uh, noting the line labeling, labeling which atom this is, but really I'd be starting in this column here with all the elements. So the first column I'd have for any atom, I'd have just what element it is, whether that's carbon, hydrogen, or something else, indicating what the nucleus is. So I have n of those types of lines. And for the first atom, we don't have any further specification because it's it doesn't matter where in space we put it. It only matters where the rest of the atoms are relative to it. So that gets rid of three of our redundant coordinates, just having the first atom listed by itself. Then the second atom, we list that, its element, and then we indicate what atom is it bonded to, or not really even bonded to, but what atom are we measuring a distance relative to. So in this case, uh, for atom 2, our only choice is atom 1 for what we have it bonded to. And the distance from that atom is the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter what angle or what direction it is. All that matters is how far away these two atoms are from one another. And that gets rid of another two redundant coordinates. So we have five redundant coordinates accounted for thus far by only having one unique internal coordinate for uh, our two atoms. Then atom three, we have uh, declaring its element there. Then we say the atom number of what it's bonded to, distance from that atom. And then we say what completes a bond angle. So angle three, one, two. So angle between this hydrogen, that carbon, and that carbon. And we say in degrees, what is that angle? 110.6 degrees in this case. All right, and then that accounts for our sixth and final redundant coordinate. So we have these six redundant coordinates, which we never specified here. And then every atom from atom four up until atom n, the rest of the entire molecule, what we specify for each atom is three coordinates. We specify its distance from a specified atom number. We specify its bond angle from those uh, three sets of atom numbers. And we specify, in addition, a torsion angle. In this case, this would be torsion 4, 1, 2, 3. And we're specifying here that that is negative 120 degrees. So as you may have guessed from this at this point, um, I have two carbons here and six hydrogens. So this is probably going to be an ethane molecule. And indeed it is. If I pull this up in Avogadro, um, if I have them uh, clicked on this label here, uh, this particular XYZ file is coming from in all the uh, directory structure of the stuff I've got here on uh, from the GitHub from the computational chemistry repository. Opening that inside the Jupyter Notebook, uh, top level going to geom, where I store all these geometries, going to XYZ directory, 
then there's a bunch of XYZ files in that directory. And this is actually the ethane.xyz file <clears throat> that I'm reading here and displaying in Avogadro. So that's the XYZ file you get from the Z matrix that we're building. So we have things like um, if I want to measure using this measurement tool, I can say bond length 1, 2 was 1.512 angstroms. So as we see there, that's what that was. Uh, 312 should be 1.09 angstroms, 110.6 degrees. So let's see, click off of that. Where's 3? 3, 1, 2. 110.6 degrees, 1.094 angstroms. So that's all good. Uh, atom 4, we have 4, 1, 2, 3. 4, 1, 2, 3. And that is a dihedral or torsion of negative 120 degrees, angle of 110.6, and distance of 1.094. So notice here that uh, atoms 3 and 4 aren't actually bonded, and we don't need them to be bonded for this to work. We just need them to be atoms that are already declared in our molecule. So I don't have to have the restriction that these are actually bonded to one another. I just have to have the restriction that anything I declare in atom 4 has to be above atom 4, so 1, 2, and 3. Anything in atom 5 has to be above atom 5, 6, 7, and 8. All of them can only be declared in terms of atoms which are above them in the molecule, and uh, doing so otherwise will result in an error. Okay, so that is the basic introduction to the Z matrix. Um, I have additionally inside of that same repository, if I go up to the geom directory, I believe I have a subdirectory here called ZMAT. ZMAT, click on that. Where I have a bunch of different Z matrices for different types of molecules like, let's see, chloromethane, if that'll load. Yep, so that's, um, in this case, I'm basically just doing what an XYZ file would do. Number of atoms, comment line, and then the Z matrix starting from there. This isn't an official type of file format. This is just something that I, uh, that I made up and uh, put together. But there's all those examples in that directory there. Then additionally, um, if you go to the scripts directory, and then down to geometry analysis, You'll notice there's this uh, zmat to xyz.py script, and in there, um, that script will take an input of a z matrix file that you have declared in this sort of style that I've got there, and it will convert that into an xyz format for you. So, at doing an example in our uh, from the top level notebooks directory and this geometry analysis notebook I've been using in this chapter. I'm going to do run uh, scripts geometry analysis zmat to xyz and the file I'm going to run that on is this ethane.zmat so I hit shift enter and there it produces for me an xyz file uh, from that z matrix it's probably not going to be the exact same xyz file I had before because as we mentioned xyz coordinates do have all of these redundancies in them but it will be one which has the same internal degrees of freedom as this thing which we've been looking at in Avogadro.